Let me just start off by saying that Pachinko is one of the best shows of 2022. If you haven't seen it, do yourself a favor, steal your friend's Apple Plus, and give it a shot. Bring lots of tissues, because if you're a big baby like me, you'll be crying every episode. But one of the things that makes this show unique is the way in which it tells the story that spans over four generations. One minute you're in 1989 Japan, and the next in 1915 Korea. To better encapsulate this epic tale, I thought it would be fun to see how the story Story plays out chronologically. Keep in mind this will only be covering the television show and I have not read the book so any theories I might have are my own and feel free to laugh at me for getting them wrong and of course please forgive my terrible Korean Japanese pronunciation. The show starts in 1915 on a character named Yang Jin. We're in Japanese occupied Korea five years after Japan has taken control of the country in its efforts to grow its empire. Yang Jin believes her blood to be cursed. Her previous three children died before reaching the age of of one, but she's undergoing a ritual that should relieve her of this. Later that year, she'll give birth to Pachinko's main protagonist, Sunjia Bake. The next part of the timeline, we actually don't have an exact year, but by doing some backward math, we can guess this is roughly 1921, when Sunja is about seven or eight years old. Through her eyes, we see how the Korean people are treated under Japanese rule. It's around this time that her father dies, and she is forced to scrape by and help her mother tend to the boarding house. Two years Years later, across the sea in Yokohama, Japan, we meet Ko Han Su, a young math tutor with dreams of traveling to America. He and his father live a simple life, but when his dad owes money to Ryoichi, a member of the Yakuza, Han Su does whatever he can to help pay off his father's debt. But his father dies in the Great Kanto Earthquake before this debt can be paid, leaving Han Su with its burden, forcing him to work for Ryoichi to pay it off. Not much is known about Han Su and what he did in this time between working for the Yakuza and ending up in Korea as the district fish broker where Sunja lives, but we do know he has a reputation as being some sort of criminal or gangster. In this time, he's also forced to marry a woman he does not love. This takes us to roughly 1930, where Hansu ends up in Yongdo, Korea, and meets an older Sunja. There they have a romantic affair, which ends up in Sunja pregnant around 1931. It's a bit unclear how long this affair lasted, but the montage in episode 3 suggests this was wasn't a one-time thing. In normal circumstances, the two would marry, but Hansu cannot, having already married a woman back home for business reasons. So Hansu promises Sunja a life where she, the child, and her mother will want for nothing. However, no marriage. Sunja will reject this offer, telling Solomon decades later that she couldn't live with her life being split in half, one hidden and one that she could talk about. This is also where we get the arrival of Isaac, who crosses paths with Sunja while recovering from tuberculosis. Knowing that finding a wife that would take on a sick man like himself would be difficult, he proposes that he and Sunja marry. Almost no man would take on a woman with a child out of wedlock, so this becomes a marriage of convenience that he hopes could blossom into love. It is later in 1931 that they move to Osaka, Japan, leaving behind Sunja's mother and giving birth to Hansu's son, Noah. Six years later, also in Osaka, Sunja gives birth to her second child, Mozasu, who is her and Isaac's only biological child and half-brother to Noah. And a year after that, around the time of Mosasu's first birthday, Isaac is taken into custody by the Japanese police under suspicion that he's a communist. It's also here that Noah unknowingly meets his father, Hansu, who seems to be keeping a watchful eye over his son. At the end of the season, Sunja tells Noah that she's going to get Isaac back, and I wonder if this means she'll have to go back to Hansu for this help. The period between 1938 and 1975 is the biggest chunk of time that the series does not explore. However, with the show being renewed for season 2, they'll undoubtedly explore these decades. There are a lot of unanswered questions here, like where is Mozasu, what happened to Isaac, and what became of Hansu? I wouldn't be surprised if Mamoru Yoshi's grandfather, the one who is mentioned as being a criminal gangster, comes into play during this time period, especially considering Solomon and Mamoru get into business with each other at the end of the season. Our next significant time period is 1975, where a 14-year-old Solomon has fallen in love with his father's girlfriend's daughter, Hannah. He ends up stealing from a local convenience store where he gets caught and his father ships him off to America. 1975 to 1989 is the second biggest gap in the Pachinko story. We know that Solomon spent his time attending Yale and working his way up in business. His father also started growing his own Pachinko parlor. But it's 1989 where much of our story comes to a head. Solomon returns to Japan believing he can convince a local 
Korean woman to sell her land to the company he works for. What ensues is an internal dilemma between Solomon's allegiance to his company and to his family and heritage. He ends up bungling the deal, which gets him fired, and later will meet a notorious businessman by the name of Mamoru Yoshi. Solomon's character arc is very interesting. It goes from indifference towards his heritage, to sticking up for his heritage, to actively defending it by vowing to destroy the very people he used to work for. It's his way of getting back at the people who subjugated his family and people. Season 2 will likely continue this timeline with Solomon and Mamoru's partnership, which I think will delve into the criminal underworld, linking historically with whatever Hansu was up to back in the first half of the century. Whatever happens, I thoroughly enjoyed Pachinko, and I'm so excited that Apple decided to give it a season 2. If you like this video, make sure to like and comment, every little bit helps. Thanks for watching, for more bad takes, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThinkStoryYT. And until next time, remember... Shit, oh, but why is it that? Come by, shit! Ha 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 ha!